when we talked about COVID-19 and December 7th elections. We made the point that if COVID-19 persists, then we hope it doesn't. And by December 7th, we are not able to have the election. The Constitution, we said to you, throws us up a few options. So we looked at different options and dismissed some of the options, and we stayed with one option. Tonight, we are here to update the information. We are here to give you the latest on what our research has found, because we have continued to interrogate the matter. We have continued to ventilate the issues and talking to lawyers and talking to judges. And we now seem to have formulated a new position on the matter. Well, is it new? It's an additional position to the matter that we want to share with you. And I encourage you that also talk to your friends who are lawyers, talk to your relatives who are lawyers, and, uh, and we can get on with it. So we dismissed the position of a state of emergency on Article 31. We said it won't work. And we also dismissed the position of um, the Chief Justice taking over because the three arms of government have gone, or because the first two arms of government have gone, the executive and the legislature have gone, and Chief Justice takes over. We dismissed that as well. But then we led you to Article 1133 of the 1992 Constitution. Have a look at it again. This is what we said. So Article 1133 of the 1992 Constitution, now on your screen, says, where after a dissolution of parliament, but before the holding of a general election, the president is satisfied that owing to the existence of a state of war or a state of public emergency in Ghana or any part of Ghana, it is necessary to recall parliament. The president shall cause to be summoned the parliament that has been dissolved to meet. And four continues to say, unless the life of the parliament is extended under the provisions of clause two of this article, the general election of members of parliament shall proceed and the parliament that has been recalled shall, if not sooner dissolved, again stand dissolved on the dates appointed for the general election. So our analysis then was that because Article 1133 talked about the state of a public emergency and because COVID-19 appears to be a state of public emergency, we actually congratulated the framers of the Constitution for their foresight. And then we, we made the point that because 1133 has the power to sustain Parliament, it means it does also have the power to sustain the Speaker. We also discussed the rather controversial issue of the, the role of the president in 1133 because the law says the president it is who will then extend the life of parliament. But it has to happen upon the dissolution of parliament. We contrived that because the president's tenure is almost certainly coterminous with the tenure of parliament, that as soon as parliament is dissolved, the president's tenure also ends, that the president conceivably will not be able to exercise his authority under 1133 after the dissolution of parliament. So we made the point that the president can exercise that authority prospectively. That is to say, if by December 7th we are aware that we cannot hold elections, or even by November we are aware that we cannot hold elections on December 7th, the president can uh, make uh, provisions and say that he's exercising his powers under Article 1133, that on 6 January when the parliament automatically dissolves, he continues the life of the parliament. These are the arguments that we made uh, on that occasion, and we're convinced by these arguments. So the point then was, okay, so parliament is sustained. The president goes, and we, 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 we sufficiently made that point. The president going is automatic. The vice president going is automatic. And the executive of government, ministers and deputy ministers, they all go with the president. So we gave you the legal basis for that. So we said parliament remains. If parliament remains, then the speaker remains. If the speaker remains, we, we flipped onto Article 60 where there's a provision that says that if there is no president, there's no vice president, the Speaker of Parliament becomes the president. And incidentally, the Speaker of Parliament, when he becomes a president to exercise executive authority, he ought to call elections within 90 days. Let's go to Article 6011 and 6013 and have a look at that. And it says, where the president and the vice president are both unable to perform the functions of the president, the Speaker of Parliament shall perform those functions until the President or the Vice President is able to perform those functions or a new President assumes office, as the case may be. 6013 is also interesting. It says, where the Speaker of Parliament assumes the office of President as a result of death, resignation, or removal from office of the President and the Vice President, there shall be a presidential election within three months after the assumption of office. There shall be a presidential election within three months after uh, his assumption of office. So this is where we ended our argument, and we were convinced that the combined effect of Article 1133 and 4 and Article 6011 and 6013 thereof 
would give Ghana the opportunity to respond to the COVID crisis in case that we are not able to hold elections on December 7th. So 1133 will establish a parliament and therefore there'll be a speaker. 6011, the combined effect and, uh, and the replacing effect and um, the, the juxtaposing effect of 6011 and 6013 together, read together, will mean that the speaker can assume office when the president is unavailable, the vice president is unavailable, the speaker can assume the office of president and, as the law says in 6013, he must hold elections. But there is new learning, and I'm going to throw that at you, and then you can also deal with it. So the new learning is this. Those who disagree with us and whom we have had to agree with right now do not quarrel with Article 1133 or 4. They don't quarrel with that. They agree with us that Article 1133 gives the opportunity to continue Parliament. But then, the point they make is that there's no opportunity to continue the executive. So, you won't have an executive. You must have an executive, you must have a Parliament, and you must have a judiciary for, government, for governance systems to work. That's, that's what the Constitution prescribes, executive, legislature, and judiciary. Our window of creating the executive was to sponge on Article 60, 11, and 13, where it says that the Vice President... If the president and the vice president are not available, the speaker will take over. But here's the catch. We are being told, and we, we have had to agree with it, that the Article 6011 and 6013 is conceptualized by the framers of the Constitution to be within the term of the president and the vice president, not outside their term. What it means is that where the, vice, the president is unavailable, for some reason he's not available, and then for another reason, the vice president is not available. But their, ten has, their tenure has not expired. The four-year tenure granted them by the Constitution has not expired. But within that tenure, they are not available. The speaker will take over as president until one of them become available or until a new president is given. So that the framers of the law do not contemplate the speaker exercising executive authority outside the president's term. So President Akufado's term ends on the 7th of January 2021. The law does not contemplate the Speaker of Parliament exercising President Akufuado's term outside after the 7th of January. It is within 7 January 2017 and 7 January uh, 2021. Any other person who is allowed by the Constitution to exercise the authority of the elected Akufuado is to do that within 7 January 2017 and 7 January 2021, where either he's not available, he has traveled, he can't continue to hold office within his term, and same within the vice president's term. So the vice president can hold the president's uh, role within the president's term, and the speaker can hold the role of the president in, outside the vice president within the president's term, that outside the president's term, the law does not contemplate that the speaker will hold office. So that's, that's the new learning. I don't know whether I'm making sense. I don't know whether you're, you're with me. That, that no other authority under the Constitution can hold the president's term when the term has expired. Because what you are holding is the, is the, is the residual power of the president. It's not... He's not there, so you can hold the power. So it is within the same term. The people of Ghana have elected somebody to be president and elected somebody to be vice president. If they are not available, the constitution says the speaker can step in within the term. But when the term is over, no one can step in. This is the new learning that we are bringing to your attention today. Very, very complicated and very interesting. So what's the conclusion? The conclusion was Article 298 where the law says that where something has happened within the law, uh, something has happened that the law hasn't taken care of it, subject to Chapter 25, Parliament can deal with it. But Chapter 25 is about constitutional amendment. And again, the, the, the learning is that Parliament cannot make a law to amend something that is entrenched in the Constitution. So Parliament cannot make a law to continue President Akufuado's term. That would be against the spirit and the letter of the Constitution because the precedent clauses in the Constitution are entrenched. And the tenure of his uh, presidency is also entrenched. From the, the time that he's sworn in, four years after he's gone, he would have to submit himself to a general election. So Article 298 doesn't work. Parliament cannot do anything to extend the president's tenure. Parliament can extend his own tenure under 1132 under the state of war. But then it's assumed that there's a president in place. So the new learning is that from the look of, the, from the look of everything in the Constitution, it would appear that the 1992 Constitution has not conceptualized a situation where we cannot hold a general election. In other words, the 1992 Constitution of Ghana makes the election 
the holding of general elections on December 7, so important, such a big priority, a sine qua non to the existence of our democracy, that it keeps it as a bona fides of the law. So 7 December must occur. That's the conclusion. 7 December elections must happen. That's, the, that's what the Constitution seems to be telling us, that it hasn't given us any room not to have elections on the 7th of December. In whatever circumstances, the Constitution seems to say that 7 December is a sine qua non to the establishment of the Constitution itself and to the establishment of our democracy because it speaks to the fundamental distribution of the authority of states under the social contract. The legislative authority and the executive authority are distributed on the 7th of December. Those are paramount institutions as far as our democracy is concerned. So that's our new conclusion. If we get stronger, newer learning, we will come and share with you. But the Constitution, but the conclusion now is that in spite of Article 113 and in spite of Article 60, the new learning is that the 1992 Constitution has made no provision for the situation where there is no election. So elections of December 7th will happen. How are we going to do that? What's the Electoral Commission going to do? We have a few suggestions for the Electoral Commission tonight, if they, if they, want, if they are minded to listen, uh, because we do have about 30,000 polling stations. If by 7 December we still have to abide by social distancing, then the Electoral Commission should start looking at increasing the number of polling stations for the purpose of December 7th, so that we can sufficiently social distance and also uh, cast our ballot in safety. The, the cost of the election is going to be bigger because of COVID. So Electoral Commission must get ready, and Parliament perhaps must get ready to approve uh, new bills in terms of legislation to allow the Electoral Commission to raise that amount of money. No mask for 12 million people around the country, and uh, gloves, a pair of gloves each for 12, 13, that's 12 million voters. You talk about those who are going to work on voting day and all of that. I'm talking 16 something million. So we're going to have a big budget election this year because the constitution says the election must happen. And if the election must happen within COVID and if we are still within social distancing, polling stations must be increased. We have about 30,000, nearly 30,000 polling stations. Now we should be thinking about doubling it maybe so that whatever queue you see at the uh, the, um, the queue you see on voting day, uh, you can't have these kinds of queues on voting day for 2020 election because of COVID. So you're going to have socially distance uh, queues and socially distance activity for people to cast their ballots. Sanitizer will be a big deal all over the place. So over to you, uh, Madam Jean Mensa, and over to you, uh, Mr. Bosman Asari, uh, Dr. Bosman Asari, over to both of you. You have your work cut out for you. There's going to be a lot of work to do and a lot of thinking must go through the process because the Constitution says December 7th election should happen and my guess is that it will happen.